was that? <laughs> Got it, all right. <coughs> Yo, what's good everybody? We back with another video. And as you can see, we're in a different kind of environment right now. We're not in your typical commercial, private, power lifting, any kind of gym like that. We're in an apartment gym today. So I'm gonna show y'all today is how to really get a good workout in when you got limited equipment, you know what I'm saying? Like we're in an apartment, as you can see, there's not that much stuff in here that we that we're gonna be able to use, you know? So if you're traveling, if you're like going to a hotel, if you got an apartment gym, if you don't got access to a lot of equipment, I'm gonna show you how to make the best of that equipment. So I'm knocking out back and shoulders today, something that you can normally do in a gym like this. The best thing you can probably do are like arms, chest, somewhat, but anytime you got a machine like a cable machine like this, a Smith machine or anything like that, you're able to get a decent workout in. So I'm gonna show you how to get that good workout in when you got limited equipment. Let's get straight into it, man. And while we warming up, I did post a Q&A on my Instagram today. So if you were able to tap into that, you're about to get all your questions answered right here, right now. So any questions that y'all did have, y'all was getting real spicy with the questions. So we're gonna get into the questions, man. Y'all gonna get to know everything that y'all wanna know. Yeah, clouds. They've been heavy on me, wish I had them all Take them from my dogs when they sleep, ain't no Adderall Bitch, I'm going mad in from my demons, shit, I had them all I knock on my door, oh, oh. So yeah, so we start with our shoulders, we're gonna end up doing a Smith Machine shoulder press, which is one of the best things you can do. They normally have a free bar up here, so we could do a military press if we wanted to, but we're gonna go ahead and use Smith Machine for the shoulder press. We do have dumbbells too, so if we wanted to come over here and you know do a dumbbell shoulder press or anything like that, we had access to that too. But the Smith Machine is the best way, you know, really overload the muscles, not have to be worried about, you know, the 75s is what we get stuck with here, but we got plates we can load on. So we're gonna start with that. So just give me all a little look about everything that we got in here. We, of course, we got dumbbells that are going up. So you know, 75 pounds, so two racks there if you want to do anything with dumbbells. We do have a cable machine with a whole lot of attachments, so this is probably what we're going to utilize the most because there's a lot of things you can do with a cable machine, you know, pull-ups, pull-downs, rows, everything like that. Uh, for the legs, we got a leg curl and a leg extension machine that's, you know, for legs, <laughs> if you want to do legs here. We got a kind of like a dual cable row movement, so we do got the low row and we do have the lat pull-down attachment here that we're going to utilize today. Um, we do got a glute ham extension. We can really do a lot with that if you really want to. We got the adduction and abduction machine here too. Then if you want to hit abs, we got a weighted ab crunch machine. It's plate loaded. We know we got a lot of plates in here too. We have a wheel. Um, I don't know how many people really gonna be flipping a tire <laughs> in the apartment gym, but we got that here if you want to use that. Obviously, y'all seen the Smith machine. And we got a punching bag too. So if you want to really get your cardio in, which we're actually gonna show you a little bit of the cardio too. So let's go ahead to the other room. Okay. I don't want to disturb too much of the people that's in here, but, but as you can see, we got a little bit of cardio in here. Straighten up the elliptical, we got to see the row and things like that too. So if you want to get your cardio in, we do that too. Then, all the way in the back, we got what we call, <laughs> it could really be a posing room if you wanted it to be. So. We got a, a nice little room back here. It's real secluded if you want to get, you know, your posing or anything like that. Then here we got some mirrors. We got a TV. If you want to watch, you know, classes or something like that. If you want to pull up Soul Rick, it's on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? It's full Sundays, every Sunday. You know, if you want to watch that while you work out, you can, you know. <laughs> we got some kettlebells and stuff like this, some weighted balls. And we got, you know, some platforms if you want to do any, like, kind of step ups or anything like that. We got a pull up bar back here. I think a lot of people use this room either for, like, abs, because you do see, you know, you got yoga balls and things behind you. You can do, like, stretching. You can do any kind of thing you want to be more secluded than you know the rest of the gym and it's a little warm in here so i mean if you're really trying to get a sweat on you might want to come back here i don't know the baby oil might be it might be looking a little slippery today it's a little warm in here i ain't gonna lie so i dropped the q a on my instagram if y'all was able to tap into that so go ahead and get started with the questions man and as you can see there's a decent amount of questions that we got to go through so Whew. let's see the first question obviously somebody asked am i natty or not and if y'all are new here, yes, I am natural, 100% natural. I've been training for three years now, consistently. 
Uh, I didn't really figure out what I was doing until like my second year of training, but right now, yes, I'm 100% natural. Do I think about, or have I thought about getting on any type of like performance enhancing drugs or anything like that? No, because honestly, I'm doing this for the fun, you know what I'm saying? I like to lift, I like to train, everything like that. And it's kind of just something that's turned into my lifestyle. So I don't really intend on, you know, pushing myself to that level because I don't really have a reason to. But yes, if y'all seeing this again, <laughs> y'all keep asking me, I am natural. If that point ever comes, I don't see it happening, y'all be the first to know. But yes, I am natural. So this question right here is asking, what was my dream sport to play professionally growing up? If y'all didn't know, I was kind of like a multi-sport athlete when I was a kid. I played soccer, baseball, basketball, football, ran track, did everything like that. The only thing I can't do is swim. Uh, yeah, I'm not a swimmer. But growing up, I did want to play soccer professionally. That's actually what I was going to go to college for before I got my you know, scholarship and academics to come here to Mizzou. But I did have a few offers to go play college soccer. That was going to be my dream going up. I always wanted to go with like professional soccer. Yeah, I do know I'm Jamaican and everything like that. So my parents pushed me into soccer. My mom ran track. My dad played cricket. It's always been like a sports kind of family. But yeah, I did want to play soccer as a kid. I know a lot of y'all saying like, oh, he doesn't look like a soccer player. How could he ever play soccer? Like, you know what I'm saying? I imagine what he looked like on the soccer field. But nah, bro, bro, I just got big. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was in high school and growing up and everything, I was a scrawny little kid, you know? So I was never the kind of person to like, look like I played anything other than soccer. I was tall, you know what I'm saying? I was skinny. I played center forward, center back, and outside mid. That's what I played as a kid. So yeah, I wanted to be a soccer player, y'all. So y'all see me watching the World Cup and everything like that. Brazil did just get knocked out, sadly. But right now, I'm, I'm rooting for, who am I going for right now? I'm going for France. I'm a Mbappe fan. Um, Pog was my favorite player besides Neymar, and he's not playing this year. He's injured and everything like that. But I'm rooting for France right now. So if you're watching the World Cup, your boy Swole is rooting for France to win, so. So next we're gonna knock out the seated row on this here machine with the seated cable and the pull down cable. So we're gonna do the seated row here. We'll superset that with some cable lateral raises too. Not cable lateral raises. I mean, oh, honestly, because I said it, we're doing cable lateral raises. <laughs> if y'all didn't know, it's like 100 degrees in here, bro. Oh my goodness. What is air conditioning? You know, I think they had a little fan in the other room. I'm gonna go take that shit. I wanna go see. <laughs> it's blowing air. It's better than nothing, all right? <laughs> it's better than nothing. All right, for the next question, this was actually the most asked question on this entire poll. The question was, am I single? <laughs> yes, bro, I am single. I'm not with anybody, okay? So we're just gonna cut it at that. We're gonna leave it right there. No, wait, yes, I am single. <laughs> we'll cut it right there. Yes, yes, I am single, I am single. Um, the next question is, where did I get this chain from? So a lot of y'all been asking about the swallow chain. My guy on Instagram at Jacob Mark Jewelers. If you want to tap that, if you want to tap into that, Jacob Mark Jewelers is the one that actually got me this chain right here. We had a whole process, you know, get the chain made. If y'all didn't know, this was the look of my first logo right here. So if we, if you haven't seen my logo before, it was the swallow like this with the peace sign attached to the end. So what we did was we put the peace sign as you know the part to hold the chain, and then made the whole pendant out of that. So at Jacob Mark Jewelers on Instagram, if y'all want to tap into that, and we actually got some things coming real soon for y'all too. I'm getting a bracelet made and I'm getting some consumer pieces made too. It's not going to be the exact same thing, not the same materials and everything like that because I don't know if y'all want to pay for, you know, gold and diamonds and stuff like that. But I'm trying to get something out to y'all so y'all can be able to rep a chain like this by yourselves too. So y'all stay tuned for that. <sighs> I'm hot. Where the settings at on this motherfucker, bro? <laughs> It's on one, okay, let's, level seven. All right, all right. Okay, 
Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I think it's working, right? Okay, we're gonna leave it like that. You know what I'm saying? Nice little airflow. <laughs> Hey, before we get too far in the workout, I gotta show y'all the fit of the day, man. So as you can see, we rocking that new GVT, that Better Country Cove collection, you know what I'm saying? We got the brown tee with the pink riding, so we had to pair that with the pink shorts, and we got the socks on, white socks, RIP, shout out Chef. And you know we can't come to the gym if we ain't got the farm runners on. So if you wanna cop this fit right here, GVT brand, Cold 12, if you wanna tap in, say 10%, you all can get drippy like me in the gym, man. You see we in an apartment gym, but we still gotta come with the drip, you know? You look good, you live good, when you live good, Hey, <laughs> you look even better. You feel me? Get better today, man. <laughs> Get better today. Uh. <sighs> it's hot. It's a sauna in here, man. Okay. Next question. This next question right here is actually asking, what's the best way to get a YouTube channel started or start a clothing brand? If y'all didn't know, I did just get started with YouTube and my brand here recently this year. I got started with YouTube, but I wanna say August when I got back to school or something like that, and I've been trying to, you know, get a consistent wave of posting every week. So right now, um, I think the hardest thing about getting started on YouTube is kind of like, hold on, let me catch my fucking breath. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so I think the hardest thing about YouTube is really figuring out, you know, how to make longer form content like you see right here. You know, on TikTok and Instagram and things like that, a lot of the content is shorter because you're able to chop it up, just, you know, keep attention for the people that's trying to just scroll past. But when it comes to YouTube and everything like that, you got to figure out a way to, like, make your content enjoyable for longer periods of time. And what I try to do is, you know, I still put the cuts and everything in there, but I try to, like, you know, take the, uh, the content I would normally post on Instagram and TikTok, but just use that content in a bigger way. Like, for this example, this video right here. You may see, you know, parts of this workout on like TikTok or Instagram like that, but you would not see this whole entire, you know, video on a TikTok or Instagram because if you wanted to see that, you'd have to go to the YouTube. So what I try to do is like try to diversify the content in each way to where, you know, if you want to see a different kind of content, you got to go to different platforms, you know what I'm saying? And by doing that, you're able to like help your audience move around through all of your platforms. So, I, but I would say, you know, the hardest thing about YouTube is actually getting started. I know a lot of people think YouTube is like a different beast is what I hear all the time, but they're scared to get started on YouTube because it's kind of like the king of the social media platforms, you know what I'm saying? Like YouTube is the one that can take you the farthest if you do it the right way. So I would say, honestly, bro, you just gotta get started, man. It's the hardest thing about anything that you're trying to do is actually getting started. So, you know, record a video, try to vlog for a day, something like that. Really just get used to talking to the camera and then like, like you see now, like when I first got to start, you know, I used to be terrible at talking to the camera. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I used to be stuttering, you know what I'm saying? Restarting everything, cutting up clips, but now it's just getting easier to, you know, look at the camera and feel like I'm talking to an audience. You know what I'm saying? Just by, by doing that, it's just repetition, bro. Like telling you, like the more that you do it, the more you're gonna get comfortable with it. It's just gonna get easier over time. So the hardest thing I would say is about starting. But as far as a clothing brand per se, I think the hardest thing about starting a clothing brand is figuring out a way to, you know, be different than the other people that's got clothing brands out there because you know, it's kind of becoming a trend right now that everybody's wanting to get into clothing. You know, everybody's putting out shirts and everything like that. But what you gotta do is try to figure out, you know, what's gonna make your brand different than other brands. Like mine, I would say, I don't wanna see my brand as like merch. And a lot of people wanna have their brand as like merchandise for the creator. I'm trying to create my brand to be its own standalone thing. That's why I don't wanna put my name per se on it. I didn't wanna put swole rickets on anything, you know what I'm saying? But the term swole, you know, that resonates with a lot of people that are trying to get big, you know what I'm saying? So what I try to do is I created the swole brand, you know what I'm saying? Yes, it kind of has a piece of my name in it, but it's not me. That's why, like, you know, I could have, you know, pushed everything through my whole, my own page and things like that. I could have pushed, you know, you know, um, all the products and everything through my personal Instagram, but what I did was create an Instagram for itself. So that brand could grow on its own without, you know, necessarily growing me. So if people find the Swole brand and things like that, you know, they're finding the Swole brand for what it is and they might find that it's attached to me, but I can easily, you know what I'm saying, differentiate myself from the brand itself. And I think uh, another thing is really just figuring out ways to, you know, 
what's gonna, what's gonna, how are you gonna be able to do it the best way to, you know, support yourself? A lot of people, you know, do it the way where, you know, you can do print on demand, you know what I'm saying? You can do ways where you don't have to really come out of pocket, there's less of a liability for the person or for the owner of the brand because, you know, you only print things that when people order it. Or you can do the, you know, the traditional route where you order in a lot of bulk and stock and everything like that. You may end up sitting on product and everything, but that's kind of, you know, it's a bigger risk on the person that's actually, you know, doing it. But at the end of the day, you might have a bigger profit margin and return and everything like that. So there's a lot of things that go into it, but I think the hardest thing about it is figuring out, you know, what's the way it's going to work best for you. Like, you don't have to do it the same way you see everybody else doing it. I know you, lot see people, you see a lot of people making it flashy, you know, where they're sitting on, you know, stacks and stacks of products and everything like that, making it seem like they're getting a lot of orders and everything. But what y'all don't know is like those people are holding people orders, you know, to create those pictures like that. But, you know, it's kind of all up to the consumer, all up to the, you know, the owner of the brand and everything, figuring out, you know, your niche and the way you want to go about it. Just really try to differentiate, differentiate, fuck differentiate yourself from a lot of people because at the end of the day everybody's creating a brand you know what i'm saying everybody's trying to you know make their money in that kind of way everybody's putting out shirts and tees and pants and everything like that but it's honestly bro just gotta figure out a way to do it different that's the hardest thing bro and me right now i'm still in the beginning phase you know i've only had two drops now i'm working on my third now so everything is kind of like a learning process bro you can't do anything without trial and error a lot of people always want to start at the top, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It doesn't really work like that, you know what I'm saying? It, it takes steps to get to where you wanna be. You see a lot of people that are, you know, look successful and everything like that, but you gotta really think about where they started. And where they started is by taking a chance, you know, figuring out what the best way to go about it was, and then learning from their mistakes and then building off that. So if you really wanna get started, bro, the hardest thing to do is start. Once you take that first step, you know, the growth is exponential because all you're gonna be doing is figuring out what didn't work, you know, fixing that and then moving on to the next. And then all you do is, you know, keep, you know what I'm saying, making progress that way and you're gonna end up at the top, bro. That's really all it is. So the hardest thing about starting is getting started, bro. So if you ain't got started yet, maybe it's your time to get started. Hey, free game, man. <laughs> all right, so next up on the workout, we're knocking out these cable face pulls and we're gonna do some lap pullovers as well. So we got this cable machine right here. There's really a lot of things you can do with it if you wanna do curls, you know, pull downs, anything like that. So what we're gonna do here is utilize the cable to the best of our ability and knock out these two workouts, man. These cables are surprisingly smooth. <laughs> If you really know, bro, you see my Apple Watch face pink right now. Ooh. You feel me? That's it's subtle. It's subtle, but it matches. You feel me? <laughs> all right, this is something that a lot of people always ask all the time. It's about how to really grow on social media, and I say this all the time. Like the biggest thing about growing on social media is being yourself. You know, what I'm saying being authentic and who you are. Because at the end of the day. Content is content, you know, a good physique is a good physique. If you got a fat ass and you post your ass on Instagram, you know what I'm saying, people gonna follow that, they gonna follow that. But then again, it's like, what are people gonna see after that, you know what I'm saying? What's gonna keep people coming back? And that's your personality, you know, the type of content that you put out, you know, being able to be informational, teach, or really just be an enjoyable person to watch, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's like, anybody can look good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They can, they can get a like, anything can blow up, but what's gonna keep the people coming back? So the biggest thing about growing your Instagram, your TikTok, anything like that, is the consistency and about being yourself. You gotta, how are you gonna differentiate yourself from all the other creators that are doing the exact same thing? And we were talking about this a, a minute ago, I think a lot of people are kind of getting on this influencing wave or this gym wave or something like that just for like the kind of clout or fame they think comes with it. Like a lot of people are kind of like falling in love with, you know, the recording part of the aspect of it rather than the gym aspect of it. And that's really turned into a problem because at the end of the day, you know, the, the market is getting kind of, um, what's the word? The market is getting saturated with a lot of influencers and everything like that because everybody's trying to, you know, get the fame, the sponsors, this, that, that. And we're gonna talk about that later because that's another thing that kind of blows me about, you know, the whole influencer community right now. But at the end of the day, it's really, you gotta, you know, figure out a way to be yourself, you know what I'm saying? If you're watching back your content and you're looking at it like, damn, I would not watch it if it wasn't me. You know what I'm saying? If you're watching your content and you're looking at it like I would scroll past it, probably something that you don't want to post, you know what I'm saying? Post the thing that you want to see personally because at the end of the day, you might have the same interests and likes as somebody else. So if somebody, if you're watching your own content and you're saying that's something that resonates with you, it might resonate with somebody else that too. But the main thing about it, bro, is you gotta figure out a way to be different, honestly, because it's getting to the point now where a lot of people are doing a lot of the same thing and you're gonna get scrolled right past if you're doing the same exact thing. Like trends, are, trends and everything are cool to incorporate into your content, but you gotta find ways to be different, bro. That's really all it is. <sighs> 
Oh, yeah, that's it, honestly. Um, that and then, uh, hmm. Another thing I tell people all the time, you gotta learn to read your insights, bro. I'm telling you, your insights tell you exactly what you wanna know. If you wanna know what posts are doing the best, what kind of content you should recreate, look at your insights. If you wanna look at, you know what I'm saying, what time of the day you should post, look at your insights. If you wanna look at, you know, the hashtags and everything that are doing the best for your content, look at your insights, bro. I'm telling you, your insights show you everything that you would want to know about your content. Another thing about it is you can't try to replicate exactly what somebody else is doing because their insights and their, you know, their following and support system is not the same as yours. So if you try to recreate that, you know what I'm saying, it may not be the best for you. What you gotta do is figure out a way to, you know, figure out what works best for you. Of course, take inspiration from other people and things like that, but you gotta figure out, you know, what works best for you. And that's a lot of things I feel like people are doing less of is figuring out what works best for them they're kind of just trying to recreate the same thing that everybody else is doing if you really do it like that you know what i'm saying it's not going to work the best in your favor because you're doing what works for somebody else you know what i'm saying instead of figuring out what works for you so really look at your insights things like that and it, it literally explains to you exactly what you should be doing and i feel like the best way to really show y'all that is to like show y'all the insights myself you feel me so i guess we can i don't know is it clear Okay, so if we look at my insights, bro, right? You go to your professional dashboard and everything, you click on your insights. If you wanna figure out what post you're doing that does the best, you can go to your insights and it will literally tell you, if it wants to load, uh, it turns out. It'll literally tell you which posts are doing the best and what they're doing. So if you want to recreate a post that's your top performer, you know what I'm saying? All you have to go here is look at it and try to recreate that video. You know what I'm saying? If you want to look at, you know what I'm saying, what posts are not doing as well, you don't know, scroll to the bottom, you look at that and you know that you don't want to recreate something like that because it's not doing as good. You know, if you want to look at something like times a day you should post and things like that, you go down to your professional, you know what I'm saying? You go to your insights and everything. You go to your following, you scroll down to the bottom, it tells you the times that your following is online. You know what I'm saying? It tells you the time of the day, the days of the week that you have the best support. So if you're looking at, you know, what times of day you should post, what content you should post, what days of the week you should post, it's all right there for you. I'm telling you the best way to figure it out for yourself is to go there and actually study that stuff. Because when you learn it, it's gonna benefit you in the long run. So Another thing I learned is you gotta stop spamming reels, bro. Like, one thing that a lot of people realize is that because Instagram was getting so much like TikTok with the reels and everything, that they stopped pushing reels as much. So a lot of people try to just spam reels like they would on TikTok and it's not really growing their account the way they think it would. You gotta try to diversify your content to post reels videos, posts, stories, all the type of thing people can engage with because that's what keeps people coming back. You know what I'm saying? The same way you can blow up on TikTok one day and your post cannot do nothing the next day on TikTok, it can be the same way on Instagram if you just spam reels. But what I learned is that, you know, having a consistent schedule of reels, regular posts, videos, story posts, engagement posts, things like that, really keeps people coming back to see all types of your content. So it's really just about, you know what I'm saying, diversifying the type of content that you put out and, you know, really figuring out what works best for you and what works best for your account. That's really free game. I'm giving y'all straight sauce, bro. <laughs> if you're watching the video, you really getting straight sauce, man. Let's sit down for this question because it's getting a little deep now. All right, so this question was, what is the hardest part about juggling all the brand partnerships along with your own brand? So one thing I would say is, you know, don't take off, don't bite off more than you can chew. You know, like as a lot of y'all know, I'm partnered with GBT, Gymshark, Gila Mix, First Form, and I have my own brand, the Swole Brand, right? So what I realized is a lot of times you have to kind of figure out what you want to push at certain times of, of what you want to push at certain times, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, y'all did see Black Friday just came up, right? Everybody was dropping sales. GBT had a sale, Gymshark had a sale, First Form had a sale, Kilo Mix had a sale, everybody was having sales, right? But what I planned on doing was I wanted to drop my merch during that time too. You know, I wanted to drop the Swole Brand products during that time too. And I realized that that may not be the best way to go about it because it would have looked like I'm turning into uh, just a marketer. You know what I'm saying? What I try to do is make my content as organic as possible so it doesn't look like I'm just throwing products in your face all the time. And what I realized is that kind of gets better engagement than people that you just see saying, buy this, code this. You know, every post that they do, it just has to do with some kind of return for them. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't spam stuff like that. Because I feel like that takes away from the creator themselves. It kind of turns them into somebody that's looking like they're just here for the money, trying to be money hungry, stuff like that. So what I realized is, 
you kind of have to you kind of have to judge what would be the best time to you know push certain things right so it may be like a subtle thing here about you know what's my pre-workout mix something like that i could show that that's easy you know what i'm saying but you know when the gymshark release is coming out you may see me wearing a lot more gymshark than gbt because you know we want to show that that's kind of stuff that's coming out but when gbt has a release you may see me wearing a lot more gbt than gymshark because it's the same way you know what i'm saying it's kind of just figuring out the seasonality of things and figuring out what's coming out what you want to push your audience towards and what's going to be the best return for you. So I guess that's the best way to go about, you know, the entire thing of having multiple brands. But I would say at the same time is you don't want to just partner with every brand that comes to you, right? Of course, there's been a lot of brands that I could have partnered with, right? But I don't want to just put my face on everything because that makes it look like you're only doing this for the money, which is a perfect segue into something else I want to talk about. Bro, uh, uh, the most common thing I see these influencers and everything talking about is, bro, What's it like being partnered with so-and-so? How much money you make from this? Does Instagram pay good? Does TikTok pay good? How much you making here? Is this something that you could do it to live off of? Like, bro, I think a lot of people are getting too wrapped up in the whole aspect of trying to make money off of this. And this is why nobody is doing as good as they think they should, right? Because at the end of the day, y'all are only worried about doing this to get a return from it, right? Y'all not falling in love with the gym producing content, growing an audience to be able to inform, teach, and you know, just be, you know, create a great audience for yourself, right? I think too many people are too worried about the return, the monetary return that comes with it, right? And at the end of the day, I feel like that's what's gonna cause a lot of people to not be as successful as they think they're gonna be. Because the worst thing, like, and this happens a lot, right? So many people come up to me all the time and the first thing they ask me before anything else is, how much money do you make from this? How, do you, how much money do you make from that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I see you post these all the time. How are you doing with that? And it's like, bro, that's not the type of questions I want to answer for people because what I may do is not what somebody else is going to be able to do. I know, I know some people that are doing way better than I am. You know what I'm saying? I'm a college student, bro. We're just making things work. You feel what I'm saying? But if all you're worried about is the money, you're really only partnering with people for the money that it makes for you, you know what I'm saying? That's a terrible look for you, the creator, because people see right through that shit. Like, trust me, me as somebody that's partnered with a lot of brands, I can tell when somebody's just picking up shit for the money, you know? And that's something that, you know, a lot of people are infatuated with now, and that's what's gonna be the main reason a lot of people don't really make it in this industry. Because when it stops making them money, they lose the drive, and they lose the, you know, the ambition to really do this shit for real. Because me, you know what I'm saying, I was doing this shit when I wasn't making no money. You feel what I'm saying? So people think that you're gonna start influencing and start, you know, being a creator and things like that and start just making money out the blue and it doesn't work like that. So I'm sorry to break it to y'all, but it does, it's not about the money, okay? If you're doing this for the money, you're not gonna be successful, okay? And that's just kind of the, the plain and simple. If you're doing it for the money, you're not gonna be successful in this shit. You have to really fall in love with the, with the, you know, producing the content, fall in love with the gym and bettering yourself because that's what we're here for, right? If all the cameras turned off, would you still be in the gym? If the answer to that is no, then you shouldn't really be doing this, bro. And that's probably the last thing I gotta say about that. So if y'all really only doing this for the money, hey, good luck, Charlie. <laughs> Good luck, Charlie. So moving on in the workout, we're gonna knock out the Smith Machine upright rows to really target that full shoulder and our traps and everything like that, upper back. Then we're gonna superset that with these D-handle pull downs right here. So getting a little bit more back, a little bit of shoulder, everything like that, but we're gonna keep this workout moving along. Man. Your ultimate purpose in life. Yeah, y'all getting a little too deep. <laughs> That's deep. Best protein powder in pre-workout. Come on now. <laughs> you already know what I'm gonna say, man. First form, I'm running that project one right now. That's the kind of pre-workout I've been taking just cause it got, you know, high stem, you know, has everything that you would need for pump, focus, everything like that out of a pre-workout. And for my post-workout, I'm using that formula one from everything from first form, of course. My favorite flavor right now, I'd say the orange dream signal because it literally just tastes like straight ice cream, bro. So if you wanna try them out, links gonna be in the description if you wanna check them out. You already know, look, it's free game for me. If y'all know, if I'm using it, it's, it's the good shit, you know? So if you wanna try that out, y'all go ahead and try that out. What kind of camera do I use? I just told y'all this. If y'all if y'all follow me on Instagram, you just figured this out. I use a Sony ZV-E10. All right, let's let's just go ahead and go through it now. So if y'all hear this, if y'all are ever looking for what kind of equipment I use, it's right here, okay? My camera, Sony ZV-E10, right? That's the camera, okay? It's not too much of an expensive camera. It's kind of like mid-budget, right? For the lens I use to shoot my videos with, it's a Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4 for a Sony E-mount. That's the lens I use to shoot, you know, all my in the gym videos, everything like that. For my vlogs, I use a Sony 11 millimeter 1.8. It's kind of a wider lens, so you can you you know hand hold it and everything like that, and you'll be able to see enough. 
Um, for my mic, I use a Rode Wireless Go 2. And that's somebody, the little box you see clipped to everybody's neck and everything like that, that's the mic right there. So if y'all was wondering, you know, the whole setup, that's the setup. A lot of people's even asking about, you know, what tripod I use. Bro, it's, it's a tripod. Like, <laughs> I use the one that says Amazon Best Choice, bro. <laughs> like, I don't, like, if you want Amazon type in camera tripod, that's the one I'm using. Like, it's, it's not gonna make that much of a difference. But yeah, that's the entire setup. I do, I may end up, you know, upgrading my setup here soon, but right now, everything I'm using is working for me, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm liking it. So I don't really have a reason to, you know, upgrade or anything like that. But that is the camera setup, man. All right, so the next question, asked, somebody asked, how was my semester? And honestly, it was tough, I ain't gonna lie. Like, we're getting into finals week and everything like that right now, and I would say this had to be one of my hardest semesters, just because, you know, the way things are going with this whole social media thing has kind of got me less inclined to pay attention, you know, really try to, you know, finish this degree to the best of my ability. Because what I'm gonna try to do now, outside of college, is try to get into the whole, you know, influencing and, you know, training space full time once I graduate, you know? So I'm not even gonna be using, you know, my master's in accounting, which is what I'm gonna end up getting, you know, to the full of, of its extent. And I would say it got hard to the point where I just realized like it didn't feel like I was doing this for a reason. You know, like, I'm going to class and everything like that, but at the end of the day, it kind of felt like it was taken away from what I really wanted to do. So it got a little bit harder to, you know, stay focused about, you know, college and everything because it kind of just felt like I was doing this for no reason, you know? But it kind of took, you know, talk to a lot of people to really like refocus myself to finish strong and everything and like realize that, you know, once I do graduate, like there may be have to come a time where I'm gonna use my degree. So that's what kept me from like saying, just, you know, like just F it all together and let me just like stop doing what I'm doing. So yeah, this, this semester was hard, man. It's only gonna get worse because I do have a full year left of school to, you know, get my master's and everything, but we're going strong, you know what I'm saying? If you ever see me like, you know, get kind of slow or sluggish or not putting out as much quality content because, you know, school is, you know, like taking a toll on me. So, you know what I'm saying? Y'all just, you know, bear with me through that, but we're going to be done soon. So that's the, that's the goal, man. But this semester has been tough, probably one of my toughest semesters so far, but it's all means to an end, you know, it's always just a means to an end. We're going to get there here soon. So that's all, that's all. All right, so this question right here, somebody asked me, do I drink or smoke? And the answer to that is actually no. Like, a lot of people kind of think because like, I'm a Q, I'm in college, my parents are Jamaican, like, this whole background, everything, that they would just imagine that I smoke and drink, things like that. I actually don't, bro. It's kind of not appealing to me. And it's not for like, health reasons or anything like that, where I want to keep, you know, my form. Because I know a lot of people that smoke and drink and they look good, you know what I'm saying? It's just me personally, it's just not that appealing to me. So, you know, a lot of people see me as like, somebody that's not, not necessarily like, I just don't feel like I need to do anything like that to, you know, have fun. I'm kind of like the person that's always sober. You know what I'm saying? I turn up by myself, you know, just give me some candy. I get some sugar in my system and I start going crazy. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm good on, you know, the whole intoxication thing and stuff like that. And I just be living my life like naturally, bro. Everything all naturally, you know? So that's it on that. Pink yes. Hey, that shit clean, bro. This nigga, this nigga accessorized <laughs> <an> accessory. <laughs> hey, this man. if you know, you know, bro. <laughs> Accessorize the accessory, man. You see, you got the you got the pink on. If we got the pink on here, you gotta put it together, man. Put it together. That's what I'm saying. Y'all not touching the gym fits, bro. I'm telling y'all. I've, I've been trying to tell y'all that. Mitri, Shep, Joel, Jay, all of y'all. Like, it's okay. Like, I know where y'all get y'all sauce from, bro. Just go ahead and give me the credit where it's due. You know, they gonna hate me for saying that. <laughs> they know the truth, though. I don't care, bro. This question right here is what is my current workout split? And you know, I started, you know, with push pull legs and everything like that. I preach push pull legs if you're trying to grow, you know, strength, everything like that. It's probably the best split you could do just because it has a, a little bit of everything you do throughout the week and you're able to double down on those workouts. But I would say recently, I have been working on a push pull legs and Arnold split, but I kind of changed the Arnold split to something that worked a little bit better for me. I stopped doing uh, chest and back, started doing chest and arms and back and shoulders and everything like that. Cause I feel like, you know, putting chest and back together is kind of a lot to do in a day and you're not able to, you know, really kill a muscle as, as much as you would if it was by itself. So that's the reason I switched it like that. But right now I'm doing, you know, I always start my week with legs. Um, 
Yeah, you just gotta start the week out strong, man. Hit legs on your Mondays, you know what I'm saying? Where everybody else hitting chest, we already talked about that. When everybody else hitting chest, start with your legs, you know what I'm saying? If I do full legs, I may do full legs, quad focus, hamstring focus, anything like that, but Monday, we're doing legs, right? Tuesday, we're doing a push session, so that's, you know, bench, you know, chest, triceps, shoulders, everything like that, and then Wednesday, we're going with the pull, that's back, biceps, and rear delts, right? So then Thursday, what we do is we hit legs again, right? A lot of people try to put, you know, even a rest day between those two splits or something like that, but I just go straight, you know, so we do legs again, either full legs, quad, or hamstring focus, depending on what we did on Monday. And then uh, Friday, we're doing chest and arms, right? So normally somebody would do chest and back if they were doing an Arnold split, but I do chest and arms. So then um, Saturday, we hit back and back, what did I say? Back and shoulders, yeah, like we're doing today. Back and shoulders, and then that's, you know, your back, your shoulders, rear delts, everything like that. And then Sunday, you can take it as a rest day, or you can restart the whole split. So it depends on how I'm feeling. I may take it as a rest day. I may go to the gym, you know, do something extra, you know, just depending on how I feel. And yeah, that's kind of my split right now. Spam risk. And somebody else asked, when does the bodybuilding arc begin? And f <laughs> funny enough, I did just get on the call. I did just get on a call with the bodybuilding coach, right? So I may be competing here coming up in the next summer. You know, um, we're talking about getting on kind of an off-season plan starting at the end of this month and kind of bringing that throughout the entire, you know, beginning of next year and then competing sometime in the summertime. Because if y'all didn't know, I plan to be in Houston for the entire summer this year. Just, you know, taking this on full time and just being down there for the entire summer. And that's when I would plan on competing so I could be down there, you know, when it's really time to, you know, lock in and, you know, get everything going. So that's actually my plan right now so <laughs> y'all may see swole stepping on stage here soon bodybuilding swole you know what i'm saying we gonna i know a lot of people always said like you can't really call yourself like a bodybuilder without like actually competing in the show and i never really consider myself a bodybuilder i just feel like i'm a guy that just like lifting weights but we may take on that role that role fully and really you know go into the whole bodybuilding space so we'll see how that goes i'm not answering what's my ultimate purpose in life because i have no idea bro <laughs> i don't know what my purpose is bro we're trying to figure that out man <laughs> And to end off the workout, y'all know we can't hit shoulders without spamming lateral raises. So y'all know what we're about to do, man. <laughs> well, I feel like you zoomed hella in. Nah. <laughs> earliest and latest time that I worked out. I actually used to work out at 5.30 in the morning. Like my freshman, sophomore year of school, I woke up every day, five o'clock, I was hitting the gym at 5.30 in the morning. So that's really the earliest time I said I worked out. The latest, um, I was just in the gym actually at like 1 a.m. So I don't know if that's late or if that's early, but I got there at like 11 and I stayed till like 1 a.m. So that's probably like that kind of range. I normally tend to work out like now, somewhere between like two and five, two and six, try to get in right there, especially because, you know, that's the time a lot of people go in there. So if I want to be around a lot of people, I'll go during those times. But, you know, I go to a more private gym, so it's not really that many people all the time. But if I want to, you know, get an early workout in, in the morning, I would say probably around like 10, 9, 10 o'clock when I wake up at like eight or something like that and go in there. But normally it's around like two to six, something like that. Um. As y'all do know, I did say I'm a soccer player and things. So somebody asked me, who's the GOAT, Messi or Ronaldo? And I personally would say, I'm a Messi fan, okay? Like, I'm a Messi fan. I've been a Messi, Messi fan since I was a kid. You know, I'm, I, like I said, Neymar is my favorite player. So when they played on Barcelona together, that's kind of was like my favorite team to watch and everything. So I'm kind of leaning more towards Messi. I know the accolades of Ronaldo has and everything like that, but I feel like Messi's accolades really trump that. So if you're interested, I would say I'm a Messi fan personally. So I would call that my GOAT in the whole soccer industry. Um, bro, why you keep getting closer to me, man? It's your problem, bro. <laughs> Somebody asked me how long did it take for me to start seeing progress in the gym? And I would say that it took me around a year and a half, two years to start seeing progress. Because when I started and everything, you know, I started like everybody does. You just go into the gym, lifting weights, you don't really have a set routine, anything like that. You're just in there, you know, trying to get better, right? 
but I think a year and a half, two years in is when I, feel, I figured out like, you know, dieting is what really takes you to the next level. So once I really figured out, you know, the amount of protein and things that I need to eat throughout the day and everything, that's how I feel like I kind of, you know, got to the space of like actually seeing growth. But that whole first year and a half, two years, I promise you, I was lifting. I may have gotten a little bit bigger because, you know, you get newbie gains and everything like that. But like overall, I don't think that I was putting on that much progress. But that second year, second and a half year, up to that third year, I would say that's when I seen the most progress and everything kind of like blew up. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. All right, y'all. So that's the end of this one. I like fuck. Start over. All right, so that's the end of this one. Like I said, when you're in a smaller space like this, you know what I'm saying, you gotta make the most of the equipment that you have. So I'm glad I was able to take y'all through this kind of workout to just show y'all, you know, the things that you could do when you got limited equipment. So if you got, you know, traveling, you got a hotel gym, you can't get to your regular gym, you got a department gym, things like that. These are some things that you could do to, you know, target different kind of muscles, like back shoulders like we did today, if you wanna really get a full workout in. And also, you know, glad I can answer some of y'all questions that y'all did have. If you got any more questions, just go ahead, drop them in the comments. I will try to you know get to those the best of my ability. And you already know, man. If you want to hit me up on Instagram, TikTok, anything like that, I normally try to respond to you know all the messages as soon as possible. So hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. Glad y'all able to see you know what we're able to do. We got a good pump, things like that. And I was able to really connect with y'all on a, deep, a deeper level and everything. And look, y'all already know what time it is, man. Y'all stay slow. We'll see y'all in the next one, man. Hey, hey.